Oh, good evening, everyone. I um, hope you can all hear me. Uh, as uh, Dan uh, alluded to, uh, I am also uh, one of the alumni of uh, the old Borough Road, uh, Brunel. Um, my background is uh, that um, when I was uh, about 16 or 17, I had not a clue what I wanted to do. Well, I had a little bit of an idea. I wanted to be a professional cricketer. Um, but uh, as with anything like that, I, I wasn't quite good enough. And uh, my mum said to me, uh, Alan, I think you should go into the police force. Now, I looked at um, what the police force entailed. It looked like you had to clean your shoes a lot and keep your uniform smart. And that didn't really appeal. Uh, my brother said, no, no, you want to be a PE teacher. So I thought, well, that sounds a little bit more interesting. Uh, so I'll give that a go. So I landed at Borough Road uh, in 1982. And if you um, look at the, the honours boards um, over in the, in the PE department, look very carefully between 1982 and 1988... Uh, you won't find my name anywhere, um, but I had a great time, uh, really enjoyed myself, and ended up teaching, teaching PE. Um, I was very, very fortunate in that I landed at a school uh, where this young man uh, appeared when he was 11, and I instantly, well not instantly, but over a period of time, I lost my identity. So I ceased to become Alan Watkinson and became Mo Farah's old PE teacher. I actually prefer former PE teacher, um, but it's getting to be where the, uh, the old bit is starting to, starting to creep in. Um, Mo, as a youngster, was, was a phenom phenomenal talent, um, but it was all about what, what motivated him, that enabled him to become the talent that he became. When he started uh, running, um, he, he wasn't really very keen on running, he was keen, more keen on football, and so I had to use mo the motivation of football... To, to, get him into, to get him into running. And once you, once you became motivated, after a few trips abroad, and uh, in particular a trip to Florida, he decided that actually running wasn't all that bad after all, uh, and, and he'd give it a really good go, and he became really motivated to become a sensational runner. Now, he was good, but he wasn't that good. I beat him when he was in year eight, comfortably, I feel a little bit gutted that I didn't get a gold medal myself. I have to say, I have to qu uh, qualify it, was, the race was 30 metres. Uh, I did say go after 10 metres. Uh, and as you can see, he was, uh, he was catching up quite, quite quickly at the end. Um, I have to do this. It's gratuitous. Um, but uh, and I want to bring it on a little bit. Is it really? Okay, never mind. Anyway, that's the World Championships for 5,000 metres from last year. Guess what? He won. And if I was Steve Cram, I could do the commentary for you. Um, don't worry about that, but it's, it's, it was purely gratuitous and it hasn't really any enormous bearing on this. But as you can see, um, he turned out to be double uh, Olympic and double um, world, in fact, triple world champion and is going to go to the marathon this, this year. I've been offered a place, and I think my place actually is sitting on the couch at home watching it. So um, I'm trying to, trying to work it, so, that, so that's actually the, the case. Now, um, immediately after Mo won double European gold, which was his first, first thing that he did right, uh, I think it was 2011. No, 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 sorry, earlier than that, 2010. Um, I, went, I went to a Youth Sport Trust conference, and, and there was a thing called School Sport Partnerships that Michael Gove didn't like very much, um, and all the people that were part of school sport partnerships used to go to conferences on regular, regular occasions. And at that conference, there was a, there was a, the first slide was, don't let the last thing you've done be the best thing you've ever done. And I thought, well, hang on a second. One of my ex-pupils is done double gold at the European Championships. How on earth do we follow that? Um, but I thought about it. I actually thought the opportunities in school sport are so important... And this is where Mo's, back, Mo's background came from. All right, he was something exceptional. But the opportunity to change people's lives through school sport is, is absolutely phenomenal. And, and it's, a, it's a real gift to be able to have the opportunity to do that. And I want to talk to you about that uh, a little bit today. Because it has moved on so much since I started teaching PE. When I started teaching PE, for most PE teachers, it was about trying to find the next Mo. It was about trying to get um, the best sports teams. It was about trying to win Cups and Shields. Um, and actually things have evolved quite a lot since then because the actual level of success that had in terms of international success was not that great. How many people here remember 1996 Atlanta? I might be speaking to the wrong audience. 
A few people over there will remember it. Um, we won one gold medal. I think we won 15 medals in total. And six of those, six of those were bronze, eight of, eight of those were silver. We came 36th on the medal table. We taught those Belarusians a thing or two. They came 37th. Um, so obviously, what was happening in PE and school sport, what was happening in community, community sport, just really wasn't working. Um, and something changed. We got lottery funding, and these three organisations that you'll probably hear a little bit about tonight, or these three uh, programmes, really kick-started to Sport England. You're probably well aware of this. Um, it's all about grassroots sport. UK sport is all about uh, the elite sport. And the PESCO, PE and School Club links, the PESIP, that's PESIP, PE and School Sport and Young People programme, and the, now the primary sport premium are all about education and schools and, and where they all link in. And these people are starting to talk to each other and have started to talk to each other in, in, in quite a big way. And the, the possibilities and opportunities to change the sporting landscape and to change the opportunities for young people to become involved in sport are absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I am absolutely loving every minute of being involved in this. It's a real challenge, um, but the difference it makes to young people is quite phenomenal. So there are different aspects to this. Um, so seeing those sorts of faces on a, on a, on a regular basis is quite, quite a satisfying thing. So we as an organisation were a school sport partnership. In fact, we were two school sport partnerships in Hounslow that merged into, into become one school sport partnership. Um, and when the, the cuts came in 2010, we thought, this is, this is too good to, to let go. We're not going to let it go. We are going to do, do our very best to keep the good things that we've got going. We have a great staff, and the schools didn't want to lose them. So the schools bought back from budgets that weren't ring fenced for PE into our programmes. We went out into the community. We worked with health. Um, we worked with private companies. We worked with anybody that would particularly work with us, to be honest, um, to make sure that we were able to keep going and, and work in, in, in this area. And so, broadly, there are lots of opportunities through school sport, and that link to community sport as well, and to elite sport, uh, but predominantly, there are, there are sort of five areas I want to talk about. So, so PE, you can see the gentleman there, it's not me, he's got the same colour hair, a bit more of it, um, teaching a PE lesson. A PE lessons and physical education is not sport. And the common belief is that physical education is sport. It isn't. It is about preparing children for sport and for a healthy, active lifestyle. And you do that by teaching them basic physical literacy. Who's heard of physical literacy in the room? Quite a few people. Good. Um, it, it is understanding that a five-year-old is not a mini-adult. A five-year-old is somebody that can't actually understand basic physical movements that enable them to be able to access sport. So if you can't catch and you can't throw, and you can't run with great stability, think how many sports you can access. We need to teach that before they start to access sport. And they start to access sport at a, a certain level. And we drip feed it in gradually. It's called physical literacy because it's like literacy. You don't walk into a room of five-year-olds and throw a copy of Hamlet onto the desk and say, let's get cracking. It is all about physical literacy. So PE is a great profession, and it is a, a very important one. It's about teachers developing the physical literacy of the, of the children. Sport is more about the competitive um, nature of sport, and, 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 the, and, the, and things like dance come, come into that as well. Um, sport is your teams and your extracurricular clubs, and there are lots of opportunities for teachers to get involved in that, but also for coaches to get involved in that. There are also lots of opportunities at the moment because primary school teachers are not the most confident, or some primary school teachers, or a lot of primary school teachers, are not the most confident in, with subject knowledge of, of, of physical education. And there are opportunities for coaches to work with teachers to help them with the subject knowledge, while the teachers are, are really fundamentally the people that understand children and child development, and they can work with the children. Because PE isn't just about the physical, it's about the thinking, the cognitive, the creative, the health and well-being... Um, uh, and, and as well as, importantly, the social. So, healthy active lifestyles. The obesity crisis is huge. One of the reasons why PE and school sport is funded so well 
is because of the health, the health agenda. There is 150 million for primary school, uh, the 150 million for primary school, um, uh, school, for primary school people to put into PE and sport, and that's ring fence. That has to be spent on PE and sport. 150 million in the country works out about nine and a half thousand pounds per primary school. Now we work with them on training up their teachers to be confident enough to teach really engaging, uh, practical, good PE lessons that keep people interested. You can all probably think of, I hated, or I thought I hated French, I thought I hated geography. I didn't really, I hated the way they were taught. They weren't taught in a way that, 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 that suited me. And there were a lot of primary school teachers that actually hated PE. And it's the way that it's taught. So, so we work with those people to make sure that it's, that it's taught well. Um, and then, you know, the, the, of that £150 million, pounds, £80 million of it comes from the Department of Health. So the health agenda is really, really high. £60 million from the Department of Education and £10 million from DCMS, Department of Culture, Media and Sport. So you've got the PE, the sport and the healthy active lifestyles, which are the three bits that really, really go, go to make um, the outcomes that we want from, from school sport. A lot, on top of that funding... There is funding for school games. When this government came into power, uh, the coalition government came into power in 2010, they said everything can be solved if we've got a football team and a rugby team and a cricket team and a hockey team. Everything can be solved. We get back to, the, to basics. Um, it's a little bit more complicated that, than that, but actually the school games is a huge success. And there's an additional funding of around about 18 to 20 million a, a year for people to be school games organisers to organise these competitions and to work in these com with these competitions. And there are opportunities uh, for support of these competitions that are out there in organisations like, like our own. And the other really, really, really big area, how many people here have come from school where they're able to lead and volunteer in, in school sport? Okay, there's a few people, quite a few people, that's brilliant. Uh, and that has been, and this, this wasn't around forever. That has been the biggest sea change in physical education sport is the development of leadership and volunteering and the acknowledgement that young people are, ab are able and capable of making a huge difference to what you can offer. Back in the day when I was a young PE teacher those sorts of things were happening a little bit but actually it was the PE teacher's domain, the teacher's domain that surely the youngsters couldn't do that and you know from your own experience, how, how much you can do and how much you can change things. And that's probably a lot of the reason why uh, a lot of you are around here now. So there are lots and lots of opportunities in, in the world of school sport and community sport with, with young people. Uh, at the end of, uh, sorry, at the beginning of this year, we employed two Brunel graduates, um, both looking for PE jobs, both looking for PE jobs, and, and couldn't find them. We actually wanted to employ one. When we went to interview, we had two. They were absolutely superb students. And it was great to see that from back in the day, when I was at, uh, at college, Brunel continues to turn out great students. And um, hopefully there'll be more opportunities uh, in organisations like ours for people like yourselves. Um, I'm going to be around uh, for the rest of the duration and... We look forward to speaking to you just very quickly. Those are some of the people that we work with, and there are, there are now a, a whole host more of people like that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.